you must have come across this situation many a times in your daily life have you come across any lady in your house checking whether the rice is cooked does the person check each and every particle in that pot or does one check only a few grains i'm sure you must have noted that one doesn't need to check the whole rice that has been cooked or uncooked one just checks a few grains and one understands the status similarly you might have gone to a market for buying vegetables or grains do we really check and is it possible to check each and every grain that we purchase it is not possible and perhaps not needed as well so one checks only a few of them and then able to take a judgment whether one wants to buy this vegetable or want to buy some from somewhere else similarly you must have seen that there are certain fashions which occur in the society and how do we know that we see many youth around us may be using that particular outfit or that particular uh, way of styling the hair and then we say that okay maybe this is the fashion nowadays in this case one does not see each and every youth in the population or in the society now exactly same procedure happens in case of a research even in the research a researcher has to make some generalizations uh, has to answer the question with which the research has began in order to answer this question a data is gathered it is analyzed and conclusions are formed and then the generalizations are made in order to make the generalizations more authentic it is very essential that the data is collected from authentic resources and in authentic form research is a very rigorous process a lot of time and energy goes into it a lot of intellect goes into it lot of deliberations go so that the various decisions in the research are finalized now if one has to study the given larger group completely lot of manpower resources time and financial resources would be needed in order to make this process of study very efficient the process of sampling is needed the process of sampling wherein one picks up a small group of individual amongst the large group which has the same characteristics as that of the other members of the larger group and this process cuts down upon the various costs that are incurred in the process of research and that is why the sampling is absolutely essential in any research it is an indispensable part of any research and forms a important decisions as per as the research methodology is concerned we shall see what are the other advantages of the sampling procedure in research in research though one wants to study every individual the study of every individual per se is not needed a small group of members of the population will show the same characteristics and thus it will make the researcher the study feasible in given time line thus the uh, sampling procedure helps in studying a smaller group of sample and makes the generalizations for the larger group and that is why the study of each and every person is not needed just like in the earlier example we saw that study and checking of every grain is not needed in order to decide whether one wants to buy that vegetable or grains in sampling as the researcher prefers to study a smaller group of individuals than the larger group 
the energy that he has can be focused on the in-depth study of that small number of individuals. Thus, this gives the researcher the scope for deeper study of the individuals, of the situation at hand. One can study the same situation from different angles, the varying perspectives. Imagine that the same depth has to be incurred for studying uh, by involving each and every individual of the population in this research, how much more amount of time and energy would be needed. So, this uh, sampling comes very handy for the researcher. Since one is able to make detailed study with the help of small number of individuals, the researcher is able to focus more on the quality of the research, more on the rigor of the research and that is why sampling is very very essential. Imagine a research situation where a researcher has to collect data from 500 students from the school. Now it will be humanly impossible or very difficult to say interview all the 500 students and he can collect the data from them through in interview only when he has the personal rapport with them. If the data from 500 students is to be collected, it will be almost impossible to develop this personal rapport with the students and thus collect the data. Instead, if he decides out of 500, he would just pick up maybe say 10 students, then he would be able to develop better rapport with them and thus they would feel more comfortable with the researcher and would answer his query, his questions and participate more in the inquiry process. And thus the researcher will come up with better quality data and thus better level of findings. If the total data of the whole population is to be even tabulated to begin with and later on analyzed, it is a huge amount of data that gets created at the end of data collection. It is humanly very much possible that the mistakes are made while tabulating this data even after the use of computers. And if the data is not properly tabulated or is not accurately tabulated, then naturally it will have the bad impact on the findings later. Because of the sampling, this burden of data tabulation gets reduced to a greater extent. Less amount of human energy would be needed for tabulating the data and later analyzing the data and thus reduce the chances of the human errors in data tabulation and uh, uh, later calculations. Since lot of energy is saved in the whole processing of data because of sampling, the results are comparatively quickly obtained and the process becomes more efficient. Not much amount of energy and time is spent or is required to spend for processing the data. Thus, we see that sampling comes at such a stage in a research that one cannot go ahead without using proper sampling techniques. One is able to completely focus on the study only because of these benefits from the sampling. And thus, the in-depth knowledge and the skills in sampling are absolutely must for the researcher. After this initial introduction, in the next segments, we will be studying more about what are the various uh, terminologies that are related with sampling, what are the various types of sampling and how do we conduct exactly the sampling procedure.